What up, B-Squad? It is your boy, JB, and we are here today, you guys, to discuss the 2024 <laughs> BET Awards, you guys, that aired last night on BET, VH1, MTV, and some other places, you guys. But uh, before we go ahead and get into it, what a time, what a mess, and why so long? Like, I just really want to know that question. Why is it always so long? But before we get into the awards, you guys, let's go ahead and... Um, do this uh, our normal thing if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel and you guys aren't subscribed yet then i need you guys to do me a solid favor and stop taking me out on this date and having me pay for it at the end of it you guys know the routine you can do me that favor by liking the video subscribing to the channel turning on your post notifications and also by sharing the video you guys and with that out of the way without further ado let's discuss the 2024 bet awards shall we All right, you guys, so I don't even know where we're going to start up at because you guys not typically talk about the host, the awards that we got, the performances that we got, and the Lifetime Achievement Award, right? Everything deserves, I mean, thank God I do everything separately because everything deserves its own thing because everything had, I had an issue with just about everything in the simulcast, you guys, <laughs> just about everything. So I guess we'll start up with Taraji as a host, right? We love Taraji. I love me some Taraji down, right? But uh, or, uh, when they said Taraji was hosting the BET Awards, I was like, okay. Um, Taraji is a hit or a miss when it comes to hosting stuff. Again, still love Taraji down. First of all, let's talk about this real quick. Did y'all see Tyrese in the front row with that white on, with that white suit on? I was looking at Tyrese like I was like, nigga, you could have went up one size because that suit looked like it was about to bust and then he was up there recording i was like tyrese put your phone down buddy put your phone down so overall i think taraji did a good job as the host there were some hits and some misses right and we're gonna talk about one of the biggest misses of the the, the show i was like oh my god girl you dead ass wrong right but i was like one thing that you know Taraji looks good you know she came out there with her opening um her opening she did she redid uh not like us and um I forgot what it was called but it was it was cute it was cute right so one throughout the show you know she had different outfit changes right the one thing that I will say that was blowing me and throwing me for a loop was the fact when she came out there with her, you know, you know, she had, um, you could see right up here in her chest, not in her chest, but in her abs, right? And she had, it looked like she had drawn on abs. I was like, Taraji, you and these drawn on abs are blowing me, girlfriend. Blowing me. One other thing that I will say, it was a little cringe, but I got the point of it. I got the message of it. It's telling us to get out and vote. But that little skit with her and Vice President Kamala Harris, I was like, girl, who? wrote this script she time when kamala hears something she out here in these streets girl you out what you out who oh okay and then talking about they not like us i was like oh my god we gonna run that into the ground ain't we <laughs> we are gonna run that into the ground that was a little cringe for me also some of the segues what i would say some of the segues were terrible it's did you guys watch the pre-show? Oh my God, the pre-show was even worse than the actual show. Baby, on at the pre-show, there were a lot of moments where they would be, it would be awkward silence, and I was just like, oh my God. Number two, since we talking, we just talking about the show at this point. Number two, the audience. I don't know where half of these people were going. Some of these people was dressed for winter stuff, cause I mean, I saw leather. I saw long sleeve stuff. I was like, I saw full suits. I was like, I know y'all niggas is hot. I know y'all niggas is sweating up a storm. Like, my God. But there were some awkward pauses in the show, right? And I don't know if that was, in, well, definitely wasn't intentional, right? And the most second, so there were two cringe moments during the show in transition. The first one was when they brought out B Simone. I was like, how they gonna, I was like, okay. They brought her non-funny ass out there, and I was like, oh, here we go. Here we go. 
and she's talking about what a black job is. And then she's, you know, went up to DC, young fly, talking about. No, I will, I will say, it was funny when she said DC, come where your ugly ass sit. And I will say that that was a little bit funny. I did get a little bit of a chuckle, but outside of that, no, ma'am, absolutely not. Right? Then another cringe. Oh, there were three cringy moments for me. The second cringy moment for me was with Taraji and Drewski when they were on stage. And I was just like, what the hell is going on here? Because I think Drewski took that skit a little too seriously. And he was really trying to holler at Taraji. And Taraji was like, uh, don't hop in my DMs, Drewski. I think Drewski took that shit a little too seriously. <laughs> I really do believe Drewski took it too seriously. You know what with BET... Because the year that they, what was it? It was last year, right? Where they didn't have a host. The trans, it, it was it was still awkward last year without having a host because they kept, you know, th the show was just having awkward pauses last year. And I think that's, I think that's something that BET needs to work on a little bit, right? And then the fact that y'all are on a, y'all, the crazy part is with live TV is on a 30 second delay. So I don't understand why there be so many awkward pauses when there's a 30 second delay but okay it is what it is right and then the most awkward of awkward <laughs> moments for taraji she was out there in the audience right and she was giving out flowers to people now y'all tell me who that girl was when she was giving out the flowers when she said she got a i got a feature with wayne go check it out i was like um baby she wasn't talking to you but okay have your moment and that's what taraji said to her baby have your moment have your moment, right? And then she went down a few rows and she was supposed to be talking to Keith Lee, right? I, I preference again, she was supposed to be talking to Keith Lee. She saw this, I don't know if she just thought that the man looked good and she's like, oh, you fine. <laughs> and then she started talking to the man and asking him if he got a wife. He held up his hand, he ain't got no ring on his finger. She's like, oh, get my number later. And then she mentioned Keith Lee. He was like, that's him right there. And oh shit. I was like, oh my God, Taraji doing a skit. Uh, 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 and, like, and she don't even know where Keith Lee is, baby. She walked right past Keith Lee. Then on top of that, she started flirting with Keith Lee and his wife was sitting right there. I was like, um, you do know he's married, right? Keith Lee is married, Taraji. Just letting you know that Keith Lee is married, but that man wasn't. And so I give him his flowers too. <laughs> so mess. Oh my God, you guys, the BET Awards. I, I, you know, as much as we clown the BET Awards, I still love the BET Awards. It's still a fun time because, baby, we were having a key key on Twitter, formerly known uh, on Twitter, formerly well, X, formerly known as Twitter. We were cutting up all night, you guys, because my timeline is just ooh, I was on fire. We're going to talk about something else in a little bit because, baby, I was cracking up all night with this particular thing because it was just a running. It was a running joke all night long, a running joke. But you guys, let's go ahead and pause here and move on to the awards, shall we? All right, you guys, for this to be an awards show, we give out, le we give out less and less awards. We have, which is, it's fine to have the performances, right? And shout out to the ladies because last night was ladies night and I'm all here for it, right? But let's get into the awards. So the first award was presented by Coleman Domingo. You guys know Coleman. I know Coleman more specifically from Fear of the Walking Dead. and But you guys know Coleman from, um, we remember him from The Color Purple. What else has he been? He, Coleman has been in a lot of things. So he was a presenter for Best International Act. And child, my lights just went out. <laughs> my lights just went out in my apartment. And I don't know why. Oh my God, that is crazy. I don't know why these lights just went out. I have no idea. I don't know when they're coming back on. Oh my God. Mm -mm -mm. It's going to get hot. Oh my God. It's going to get hot in here too. Girl, girl, girl. Oh, Shadaisy. Well, let's keep going. Let's keep going, you guys. So, uh, he was presenting for Best International Act, right? 
And the winner of that went to that girl, Tyla. I think that's how you pronounce her name. I could be wrong, but I think that's how you pronounce her name, Tyla. And she got up there. She wasn't prepared to get a, you know, get the awards. So she just kind of talked at that. She just kind of talked. So I was like, okay, cool. So then the next presenter was Deval Ellis. Now let's talk about this category that Deval presented for. So Deval presented for Best Male R&B Pop Artist. Now, what I will say is the lines have blurred when it comes to that kind of stuff, right? R&B and pop because it was they had Drake in that category. They had Gunna in that cat. I was like, wait a minute. Pop? R&B? So y'all just including everybody from R&B, rap, and pop. Well, not even pop, but R&B. I was just like, wow. We have really blurred the lines when it comes to, uh, you know, we have really blurred the lines when it comes to R&B and pop. But the winner of that was Usher. And baby, Usher last night just said, F the, fuck the FCC because he was just he said he because at one point up there he was talking he said damn I said old as fuck I was like oh wow <laughs> he just let the F-bombs fly so then the next award was presented by Childish Gambino and it was for album of the year and the winner of that award was for Killer Mike now what I will say is although I don't agree with Killer Mike's political views because you know, and that's the thing that I don't understand when it comes to us, right? And more specifically, I guess you would say black men, once they get to a certain level in their lives and get a certain um, certain amount of success and money, they start then aligning themselves with, never mind, I'm going to leave it alone. You guys can catch my drift, but that's that. So then the next award was presented by a different world cast, right? And so they presented for best new artist. And the winner of that again, Tyla. Now, what I will say is I'm not familiar with her work, so I can't say if she deserved these awards or not. There go the lights back on. Child, I don't know what the hell just happened. Like that was so crazy that the lights went out on me in the middle of me doing this video. You know what, we finna, when it comes to work, we finna lie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell them tell that my well, the lights really did go out. You guys saw the lights go out, but I don't want to continue to work. I don't really want to continue to work, so we just gonna do a little pause. So the next award was presented by DJ Mustard and Andrew Day, and so they presented for best female R&B and pop artist, right? And so again, that R&B pop line. It just keeps getting, it, it just, it gets blurred, you guys. But the winner of that award was SZA, who wasn't there to accept the award. And then the next award was presented by the cast of College Hill. So you guys know this season of College Hill is Claudia Jordan, Tamar Braxton, Saucy Santana, um, Nick Young, and Carlos I can't think. Of, I, I I think he's from Wild and Out. I can't remember his name like that. And then uh, Angela White, aka Black China, right? So they presented for the BET or her, BET Her Award, and the winner of that award was Victoria Monet. And congratulations to Victoria Monet. I absolutely love Victoria. I think she is on the rise, and I'm just so happy for her. I'm so happy for Victoria. And it's so funny because I remember last year that. The MTV Awards didn't want her to perform because they didn't think that she was ready yet. But the girl has won Grammys and every, she don't want Grammy Awards and BET Awards, right? We going after we get to the last award that we go, after we get to the last awards, I have something that I want to say. So the next award was presented by the cast of the Miss Pat Show, and they presented for Best Actress, right? Now. I don't know what the criteria is for best actress. I don't know if it, if you have to be in a movie current in a movie or a TV show currently, because with Issa, Issa was in that category, and I was just kind of confused about what movie or t TV show Issa has been in this year. Because the last somebody said on Twitter to me last night was Barbie. I was like, that was last summer, 
Barbie was a, a hit last summer, not this summer, but okay. But the winner of that award was Regina King. And then the last um, award of the night was presented by Jessica and Nisi Betts. Um, shout out to them. I love their, I love them. I think they're a beautiful couple. And wow, go figure. Nisi had was unsuccessful at her marriages with those men, but seems to be super happy with uh, Jessica. And I couldn't be any more happy and elated for those two, right? So they presented for video of the year, and video of the year went to Victoria Monet for what's that song? What's that song, y'all? I know the song. I love the song, by the way. Oh my mama. So that is it for the awards. Now, what I do want to say real quick, and this is no slight or shade to anybody, right? Any of our black A-list. It's just something that I, I thought about last night, right? It's interesting, and it's not everybody who complains. It's not every A-list, um, you know, actor, A-list um, singer who complains about not being awarded by the, you know, the Grammys, by the Oscars, by, you know, the AMAs the you know whoever else right not every a-list artist complains about it but i do find it funny and i do f think it's you know i know that bt awards has kind of lost its value from if you're around my if you're my age or a little if you're my age or older we remember the bt awards from the early 2000s and it was a truce it's, it's still a celebration right it's still a celebration a black artistry, right? In in the in the you know what they I've noticed something else too, you guys. They've stopped doing the sports awards. Cause they used to best they used to do best athlete back in the day. I ain't saw best athlete in God knows how long. Like they used to honor that like they used to honor everybody, right? Because this was a show this show was created for us because we weren't getting the notoriety and the recognition from our counterparts, right? So I just think that I, I will say, again, like I said, I know that the BET Awards isn't what it used to be back in the early 2000s when Monique was hosting, you know, back to back, you know, two, two and what, two and three years in a row or however many years she did. I think she did three years. Right. I know they weren't in a row, but I know it has it's lost its value since then. But that's back when you used to see your Beyonce's, you used to see Jay-Z, you used to see Rihanna. And this is not I'm not saying anything about them. I'm just saying you would see every A-list black celebrity in that front row. Now what you see is you may see some of your A-list celebrities. I mean, because you saw Usher's on the front row. You saw, I saw LL Cool J. And I was like, oh, that because I had to look. I was like, oh, that's LL. You saw Andrew Day. So you, you still do have some of your A-list celebrities. You still have some of your A-list celebrities, but um, it's less and less. And... It's like the front row is now filled with social media personalities. This is nothing personal against social media personalities, but this, you know, when you think about when you when you go to the Oscars, when you go to the Grammys, when you go to the um, the Tony Awards, right? When you go to um, the Emmys and all that stuff, you don't see social media people in the front fucking row. They are not in the front row. If they're in, even if they're even in the building, they in the back. No shade, right? Let's just be real. Let's keep it a buck. They're not in the front row, and I think that that's the problem with BT. I think I don't know what needs to be done to get the show. Because I mean, hell, when I graduated high school, um, Beyonce then was still going to the BT Awards, right? I think that was around. I think that was around the last time that we really saw them at the BET. No, we've. She's been. To, she's been back since. Has she? Hell, I don't remember. Y'all can correct me if I'm wrong. But I think that's. A, I think that's an issue that I have, and it could be on BET. It could be on. A, we don't know where the the problem lies, right? But I just know that that's a, something that I noticed, right? Year after year. You know, we don't have our celebrities, on. You know, we don't really have A-list celebrities on the front row you mostly see them mixed if you do see them they're mixed in with again the social media personalities and again that i'm not i'm not trying to take a dig at anybody that's a social media personality and i don't want people to take it that way that's just my observation that's just 
how I take things, right? But yeah, you guys, uh, we can discuss that in the comments section below, you guys, and we will go ahead and move on to uh, the Lifetime Achievement Award, and then we'll wrap up with the performances. Oof, some of them, they could have kept. But let's pause here and move forward, you guys. All right, you guys, so the Lifetime Achievement Award was presented by Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. And I was like, oh, wow. As, you, you forget that people are getting older because when I looked at them, I was like, oh, my God, they are really. How, how old are they? How old are Jimmy? How old are they at this point? I don't even know how old they are, but they, would, they, they definitely showing, the, you know. But again, we all getting older, so it ain't really nothing to it you, you that's something that you just can't avoid it's just something you, oh 60 65 or 67 they don't look bad they don't look bad they just you can definitely see that they're getting older so like i said the lifetime achievement award is presented by jimmy it was um they got up there talked about usher because that is who is receiving the lifetime achievement award right so then after that um, we got the performances. What I will say, and I know a, a lot of people were upset that there were, you know, the women were doing the tribute to Usher. I didn't have a problem with the women doing a tribute to Usher. I actually liked it. There was just some hits and some misses when it came to uh, the performances. Number one, Childish Gambino. I was like, girl, what? <laughs> okay. Okay. Kiki Palmer came out. I love me some Kiki Palmer, right? I think Kiki Palmer did a fantastic job. I loved Kiki, right? I loved Kiki. Um, Tanache. No, ma'am. You will not do a, a classic, classic of Usher and not spell, they call me U-S-H-E-R-R-A-Y-M-O-N-D. Now, baby, tell me what you want to do. Like, you, you she didn't even spell the nigga's name. I was like, because I was ready to get into it. And she just sitting there, she just standing on the stage. I think she was dancing. I was like, girl, that's the, and you can hear, you hear the audience spelling his name. Like, girl, that is the part that we all look for in the song. Like, my God, today, she did not spell his name. I was like, girl, you pissed me off. You pissed me off. You pissed me off, Tanache. And I actually like Tanache. I really do. Um, oh, who I love seeing was Tiana Taylor and Victoria Monet. I was like, ooh, the lesbian energy that I'm seeing on this stage with these two. Would love to see it. Would love to see it. What I also would love to see is a collaboration with them too. I, I would love for those two to collaborate with each other. Um, Chloe Bailey did a good job. Marsha Ambrosia. Marsha Ambrosia. What in the F U C K? Was that? <laughs> was she supposed to be singing caught? Like, cause I thought I heard her start up with caught up, but then I don't know what she transitioned to. I was like, what in the hell? Summer Walker. <laughs> Summer Walker and that booty. I couldn't even listen. I couldn't even listen to Summer Walker because I just was distracted by her ass. I was distracted by her ass. And, it, and how lopsided it is. I was like, oh my God, girl. What is going on here? Like, no ma'am, no ma'am, no ma'am. Mm-mm, Summer. No ma'am. No ma'am. So I don't even know, I don't even know what she performed. That's just me keeping it real with you guys. I don't know what the hell Summer performed. Who else was part of the tribute? Um... Who else was a part of that damn tribute? Oh, baby, why did the, <laughs> Lotto was the one that closed it? Girl, what? And I like Lotto. I really do like Lotto, but I was just so befuddled and confused. It like Lotto, Lotto. That was what y'all decided to do. Lotto. Now another person that I love, Coco Jones. One of the biggest fan of her performance. I really wasn't the biggest fan of her performance. I wasn't the biggest fan. And I thought it was interesting that with Coco, she, I don't forget what song Coco did, but whatever song Coco did, she was dancing with his wife and he was looking, 
But then she went and grabbed him. I, I was like, I get that you want to be respectful of the wife, but it was just a little cringe cringe to me. But yeah, the performance. Again, I don't have a problem. I know a lot of people were upset that the girls were, you know, the ladies were performing, that it was women. I have no problem with that. I loved it. I thought they did. I think I thought some did good, some didn't do good. Now, where they where BET really lost me at was his speech. So, if you watched the show live last night, I don't know if they've gone back in. Well, they can't because that was live television, and the per whoever was on the sensor button, baby, they just held a finger on that sensor button. Now, granted, when Usher did get up there, he did drop, some, he, he did say fuck, shit, and all that stuff, right? And so when I woke up this morning, um, somebody actually posted it on Twitter, and they posted the full entire speech, right? Now, he did take a little shot at Tamika. <laughs> so he's, when he started cussing, the, 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 the bleep and blur guy just, you know, bleep, 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 bleep. Didn't hear nothing for a good, I would say at least two minutes or so, right? Because I was like, is he, like, is he, did he really just say fuck the FCC last night? But I woke up this morning, heard the speech. It was actually a really great speech. I wish they had played it. Yes, like I said, did Usher cuss here and there? Yes, he did, but it wasn't like he cussed the entire speech. He just said some curse words here and there. But the person who did that, you, 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 you fucking wrong. And you robbed us of that. Like we had to wake up this morning and go and listen to the speech on, on social media. Now this is one of them times where I will say I'm thankful that people actually were recording it because I did have a problem with that. Cause that's all like, that's all you could see with the performances. All you could see with the performances was this. You just see people's screens. You just see the screens and it's like, damn. I mean, I know, and here's the thing. We live in a day and age where you want to capture everything as it's happening, right? And I definitely do get it. Like, because you guys know, oh, well, you guys don't know. So I went to go see Megan Thee Stallion this past weekend, this past Wednesday when she was here in Dallas, right? And there were bits and bit moments where I would, you know, pull my phone up and record. But some of my videos are a little shaky because shit. I'm more interested in watching the performance and being, you know, perform, you know, going along with them than I am capturing the moment, right? Because I don't have that many videos from her. Even when I went to Beyonce's concert, I don't have that many videos from Beyonce's concert. I don't have that many from Beyonce and I don't have that many from Megan. I have maybe from Megan's concert, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven videos from Megan's concert. And then I did some on, um, on, on, and I did some on Instagram stories, right? But it wasn't that many. So I, I get it. We want to be in the moment and we want to capture it and we want to have it so that way we can show it to other people, right? And that's fine. But it's kind of distracting when you're recording and a fucking cameraman is right there trying to record and all I see is your phone with how long you've been recording. Like, that's kind of annoying. But again, I will say shout out to the people that were in the building because if it wasn't for y'all, we would have never known what Usher said. Because the bleeping blur guy just said, fuck it. Beep! Y'all, like that episode of Family Guy where Peter was, you know, there was a guy with the, the horn. Boop, boop, boop. So, yeah. Let me know what you guys thought about the Lifetime Achievement Award and the, 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 um, the tribute. Again, I love the latest performance. I just, I just wish we'd done something different. Now, we'll pause here and we'll end it with the damn performances. <laughs> the performances. Shout. I heard you guys, so the performances, my girl Megan Thee Stallion, she opened the show, so she opened it with Hiss. She did BOA and Where Them Girls At. Now, what I will say is Megan's album came out last Friday, right? Now, I have not, I listened to it some of, I actually listened to one song on Saturday and I was like, uh, I'll come back to this when I get the, get the time, right? Because I was driving and I'm going to go back and listen to it. I love Megan, so I'm going to listen to her album. Now, I have saw people who have said that they prefer uh, her last album over this one and I'm like, okay, 
I did love the last album by Megan's. I will I will be honest about that. I loved her last one. But we'll see what this one is given, right? So if you guys have listened to it, let me know your thoughts and opinions. Also, let me know your guys' thoughts and opinions on her performance. So the second performance was Victoria Monet, and she performed On My Mama and All Right. And once again, I'm just happy for Victoria. This is her moment. I want her to enjoy everything that she, you know, everything that is happening for her this is her time to shine and again i'm super super duper happy for her right she looked amazing on that stage child the next performance sexy red get it sexy get it sexy boy you know this ass super fat fuck me good i'm throwing that shit back shut up y'all yes i do know some of that song and i'm gonna tell you guys why i know that song because when i went home for juneteenth the parade that we have that song, so many people were playing that song. I was like, my God. And then I went out to a concert that same night, the night before, and they played Get It Sexy th about three different times. I was like, my God, how many times do I have to hear this damn song? What I will say that I cracked up laughing at was when I saw Andrew Day on that front row. She was like, <laughs> I took a screenshot. I took a picture of it, baby. Andrew Day's face was everything to me because she didn't know how to feel like y'all see andrew day <laughs> that's one <laughs> like look at andrew day she was like girl what the fuck was that andrew day was me andrew day was 100 percent me because i was so confused at watching sexy perform so then after sexy red performed um we had van van and eris and they performed be you and i was like oh that is so cute keep your comments if you feel if you feel however you feel about eris keep your negative comments i only want positivity when it comes to eris i only want positivity when it comes to eris and van van leave the negativity for someone else not for me because i i'm i'm happy for eris you guys can say she's you guys can say whatever you want to say about her right but she 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 is um I, I think she's a cute little girl she you know i think she's a right now she's a baby she's very young so she's going to eventually she's going to grow her voice is going to change and her voice is going to mature we don't know what she was we don't know what she'll sound like once her voice matures so keep the negative because i know so many people talk about oh she can't sing Keep that negativity somewhere else. Take that bullshit somewhere else, right? The next performance was Will Smith, and um, he performed a new song called You Can Make It. Child, when Keith, um, not Keith, when Kirk Franklin came up on that stage, I was like, Kirk, I know you hot in this suit that look like it's leather. Didn't these hot white-ass boots? Babe, I know he was sweat a sweaty, musty demon. I just know he was a sweaty spirit. Now, what I was pissed off at with BET was the soundstage. They only had one artist on the soundstage, and I thought that was so fucking disrespectful. They put Tanner Adele on the soundstage, and I was like, I really felt like Tanner Adele should have been on the main stage. What they could have done was they could have switched Sexy Red and Tanner Adele. That's what they could have done, but they didn't do that. And I was like, that's some bullshit, man. That is some bullshit if I ain't never saw some bullshit. But Tanner Adele, she did, oh no, she wasn't the only one on the soundstage, it was somebody else. But Tanner Adele did, I'm a buckle bunny, I love that song, you guys, I love it. And then she did, um, Cowboy Broke My Heart. So next up, you guys, was Glorilla. Oh man, you guys, I love fucking Glow. I love Glow. When she, um, so you guys know she's on tour with Megan, right? I don't know if Megan's tour is on, I know Megan's tour is almost over, but I don't think it's completely over yet. But when I saw, I made it to the concert while Glow was performing, and um, I missed some of her performance, but I didn't miss that much of her performance. But she did good at the concert, and she did good here, right? So she did TGIF, and she did Yeah Glow, and she also did Wanna Be with Megan Thee Stallion. And when she did Wanna Be, baby, that's my shit right there, you guys. I, that's my shit, baby. I get up out of my seat and I be go, I be going with them, like I be I be getting it in with them. So we had that. Then after Glorilla, we had Shabuzi. 
So Shibuzi performed his song, a bar song, I think that's the name of it. And then I heard everybody in the club get tipsy. Everybody in the club get tipsy. And everybody in the club get tipsy. And I was like, wait a minute, Jaquan. I was like, wait a minute, where did they find Jaquan at? Now you guys, who am I? Who am I confused? So I'm confusing Jaquan for somebody else. Because I thought Jaquan was not with us anymore. Who was that? Oh, it's the pop lock and drop it guy that passed away. That guy that passed away, right? That was the pop lock and drop it, right? Ain't he? Ain't he, didn't? He, isn't he deceased, Huey? Somebody passed away, and I don't remember. Somebody. Yep, that was I was right. So it was Huey that passed away, and I was confusing him for Jaquan. My bad, child, because I was like Jaquan. But again, where would they dig up Jaquan at? Because I was like, everybody in the club get tipsy. Now, I'm showing my age because that song came out when I was in high school. <laughs> so, after Shibuzi performed, we got Lotto. So, Lotto did Sunday Service and Big Mama. Two songs of which I don't know. No shade to Lotto. I don't really know Lotto's music like that. I do like Lotto. I just don't know her music that well. Then, after that, we got Tyler. And she performed Jump. Again, like I said earlier in the in the review, that I don't know nothing about her like that either. Um, but yeah, congratulations to her for performing and I don't know her two awards. And then also we had Dochi. She was on the soundstage as well. Now I don't know what Dochi performed. I don't I, I've heard of Dochi and I don't really know Dochi like that. I want to get into her. And then the next performance, you guys, was Ice Spice. All she does when she get on stage, hold that microphone and just and just shake her ass. I would be fine if the girl just got on stage, just held the microphone and had background and just had dancers behind her dancing. She did have been dancers behind her dancing, but I would be fine if she just got on stage and just put had a microphone stand, had the mic right there and just rapped and let the girls around her dance because all she do is just twerk her ass, and it was just like, oh, my God. Then her, uh, you know what, I was going to say something. No, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. If anybody out there likes Ice Spice, this, is, this ain't nothing against you. It's just my personal opinion. Her music is trash. That's all I got to say. Her music sucks. It sucks. Child, y'all, and then a surprise performance. This is where I said, I, this is where I was really cutting up all night on Twitter about. Lauren Hill showed up. Guys, they had been they had announced it. Here's the crazy thing, right? Again, the pre-show. I watched the pre-show and Wyclef was on the at some at the pre-show, right? And he was talking about the Fuji's going on tour and you know Lauren Hill gonna be there doing the miseducations of Lauren Hill. I'd be a good goddamn fool if I buy a ticket for that shit. I, cause they so when the award show started, they kept talking about Lauren Hill is gonna be performing tonight. They kept saying it throughout the simulcast, Lauren Hill is performing. Lauren Hill, up next, Lauren Hill, up next, Lauren Hill. I was like, y'all keep saying up next, Lauren Hill, but is Lauren Hill actually there? Like, has anybody actually spotted Lauren Hill? Because we know Lauren Hill, if her chakras ain't in line, she don't show up, right? Or she comes late. I was like, Lauren probably gonna come to this shit after the, you know, after the show goes off. I'm talking about, I'm ready to perform, y'all. So I and it got to the point of um because so the show was supposed to go off at ten thirty right, and when Usher got his award it was ten twenty one I was like so we finna go into a whole nother fucking hour, damn near. So, Lauren I was and they were like up next a performance from Lauren Hill because at one point they had stopped completely at one point in the show they had stopped announcing that Lauren Hill was performing. I don't know when she was supposed to be performing. I don't know if she was on time or if she was late. But, and she got on stage talking about she on, on, on time. I was like, girl, no, the fuck you not. Because this show was supposed to have been over uh, 30 minutes ago. Because it ended at 11 o'clock. It was supposed to end at 10.30 my time. So I was like, you a goddamn on live, Lauren Hill. But okay, girl, still love you. But I was surprised. Now, what I will say, though, she didn't perform none of the hits that I'm familiar with from the miseducations of Lauren Hill or if she did it was really fast and I didn't understand what she was singing 
Because, I mean, she was going hella fast. And I was like, is the song fast or am I just... No, I don't want high, so I can't say that. I was just confused by that situation. But, again, Lauren Hill showed up, and I was just like, girl, color me surprised. I did not expect for Lauren Hill to show up. But, again, like I said, if y'all want to be fools enough to go and purchase them. Now, the Fugees, I, I would, okay, the Fugees. I love the Fugees, right? And I, I would pay to see the Fugees. I, I would. But I would also want to, but, no. Nah. No, thank you. Because I just thought about it. No, thank you. I, I'm, I'm good. <clears throat> I'm good. I'll listen to the... I, 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 can, I can get on Spotify. I can get on Apple Music. I can get on any... I can get on YouTube. I can get anywhere and find the miseducations of Lauren Hill. Because I... Yeah. Only a fool. Only a fool would pay to see her. And if you pay to... If you, if you guys go pay to see her, that's, nothing, that's no slight, no shade to you guys. I'm just saying. We know Lauren Hill's track record. We know her track record. That woman don't show up to her concerts. Mm -mm. No, thank you. Because, hell, it just recently happened. It, it happened, what was it, last year? And it happened here in Dallas that she did it. It was here in Dallas that she did it. I remember because I think it was all the way out there, like in Fort Worth or somewhere close to that area where she was supposed to perform and... They got there before the show was getting ready to start, and then they said she was she was it was canceled. I don't play with Lauren Hill like that. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Mm 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 mm. But that's it, you guys. Uh, that was the BET Awards. Let me know if you guys watched it, what you guys thought about it, down in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel, you guys. Turn on your post notifications and share the video, you guys. And until the next time, stay safe. Take care of yourselves, wash your hands, be blessed, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.